We've had a very lazy morning this morning. We had a late night last night. We had friends over and um, the kids and everything went to bed late. So we've had a lazy morning. Uh, and then we were asking or trying to work out the best thing to do today. And uh, a friend of mine suggested a cheese and wine festival uh, in sort of rural North Dorset. Apparently it's been going years. It's brilliant. Loads of stuff for the kids. So uh, we're more or less ready. We're going to jump in the car and head over there. <laughs> I'm not sure we came correctly attired for this, did we? trouble with anything outside in the UK it's only as good as the weather so while we're going around these food stalls it kind of occurred to me that if we buy food here or more I suppose drink more so but um, there's standards there's recognized standards and a lot of the time those standards are international so for example I buy a bottle of gin here that's brewed here in Dorset or distilled here in Dorset it, whatever the percentage alcohol is in it I know that that's the same wherever I go in the world so if I buy a bottle of gin in Australia, it's with the same percentage, I know it's going to be the same strength of alcohol in there. So why is it with EVs we can't get that right and we can't have an international um, standard for how far a car will go? Well, that's typical. We left the show. We stopped on the way home to get some food. Of course, the sun's come out now, but um, I think, to be honest, we were pretty much spent up there. Uh, that very, very nice gin that we bought uh, is pretty much wiped us out. But hey-ho, that gin, it's uh, whatever percent proof it is, that is a measurement of how much alcohol is in that bottle of gin. Now, whether I buy it here in the UK or in the States or in Japan or Australia, it doesn't matter. The percentage marked on the bottle is going to be the same anywhere in the world. So why can't we do that with EVs and the range testing? This was highlighted again when they released the um, 2018 Nissan Leaf and they started talking about it doing 400 kilometres, 250 odd miles. It, nobody believes it. It's done possibly in a factory somewhere with I, you know, I don't even know how they managed to get that sort of range out of it. There's obviously there's no resistance whatsoever. Uh, and, you know, there's all these different tests all around the world. So, you know, the Japanese one is the JC08. You've got the EPA, you've got the NEDC. These are all different types of tests done in different countries to tell us how much range we can get from our cars. Now, obviously, it, it was designed for CO2 and uh, emissions and what have you, but we now, that's, how, that's what we use to give us a guide for how far our electric cars will go on the batteries they've got. Well, none of them tie up. They all test in different ways. Um, we as consumers just end up confused. And I know certainly when I bought this 24 uh, kilowatt hour Leaf, the, uh, what was quoted on that, 
I was amazed that we got nowhere near it. And I, it's almost, for me, it felt like false advertising. So wouldn't it be great if there was a way that the whole world could use the same test uh, done in the same way to give us the same figures? And do you know what? Even if those figures were out, even if they were giving us still higher mileage, at least it's consistent. At least we could say, well, do you know what? It says 200 miles, but we know that a car that's done on this test that comes out of 200 miles does 150 miles. There's some consistency there. It makes it easier for us as a consumer. Well, there is a test, and um, Nissan have said they're going to use it at, to test their 2018 Nissan Leaf. Uh, now, this test is called the uh, WLTP, which stands for, and this is a real mouthful, uh, Worldwide Harmonized Light Vehicles Test Procedure. Uh, I know that doesn't fit in the um, initials, but that's what it stands for. Uh, now, this test, okay, it's not going to be infallible, but they're, the way they describe it is they're going to drive the vehicles over a whole range of circumstances in a whole range of conditions and um, ultimately for us as consumers at the end of it they're going to give a best case and a worst case scenario so at least we have got a better clue about where our vehicle that we choose to buy sits and how many miles we can do if we thrash it around in the rain in cold weather compared to driving carefully in the sunshine with dry roads. Uh, it gives us an idea, it gives us a better idea, it gives us the ability to make educated decisions about the cars we buy and the batteries we buy in them and um, what suits our needs the best. There we go, back home now, just start sorting out some dinner and um, some of that lovely food we bought today. But um, yeah, ultimately, if all the manufacturers could sign up to this uh, new code, this new set of standards, then we as consumers will be better off. So um, you know, Nissan have started it, so they say, let's see if others follow. It'd be great if they did. Uh, but um, yeah, I guess watch this space, we'll see what happens. Uh, but for now, uh, the other thing, oh, uh, the Hyundai Ionic test drive I was trying to um, organise. Uh, it looks like I'm going to get it next week, so I'm going to have it for 24 hours. So I'll, obviously I'll do a bit of a review and um, hopefully uh, I've already got loads of good stuff from subscribers, um, things to look for, things to ask. So uh, yeah, we'll, um, we'll see how that goes and see if that is a viable alternative to waiting for the Nissan Leaf, the 2018 one. But for now, if you've enjoyed today's vlog, please like it and share it. And if you're not doing so already, subscribe to the channel and um, I'll see you again soon. Take care.